So last week we looked at how to remove different things from photos using the spot healing brush and the clone stamp. And this week we're going to use those tools and we're going to take it a little bit farther and restore old photographs with them. So from our restoring old photos assignment online, you'll want to download any three of the options we have there. And all these photos are photos that were originally film photos. So the only copies of them are the copies that were printed out. And over time, they've gotten damaged. They have scratches on them, discoloration, all sorts of things that we're going to fix. So if I look in my folder here on Finder, or if you're on a Windows computer, you'll be using the File Explorer. Um, I'm in my documents, I have a photography folder here, and I have a, photo, a folder that I have created for this project, which is called Restoring Old Photos. I have a few photos here downloaded that I'm going to be editing. If you're using the virtual desktop version of Photoshop on a Chromebook, you'll then want to just take these photos that you've downloaded from our assignment and upload those to OneDrive so you can access them through the virtual desktop. But if you're using a Windows computer or a Mac computer, you can just keep them on your computer right here. So I'm going to go ahead and find a photo that I want to start with. So let's say i want to start out with this one so i'm going to go ahead and open that in photoshop and so for these photos we're going to be using the spot healing brush and the clone stamp to take out any kind of scratches that might be on the photo sometimes there's stains discoloration um, there's also a lot of the times when these photos are scanned sometimes a hair or a speck of dust or something is on the scanner on the photo and sometimes that shows up in the digital copy. Um, so we want to use a spot healing brush and the clone stamp to take out any of those kind of imperfections. Um, but also a lot of photos like this have some discoloration that we can use a variety of other tools and adjustments to fix. So starting out with this one it looks like there's a lot going on with all these green kind of stains on it. And since it's a black and white photo, I can actually start out by going to my adjustments and I'm going to find the black and white adjustment layer. And that will let me adjust this photo so that anything that isn't black and white is going to be black and white. And that's going to actually take away a lot of this discoloration. And then I won't have to do as much with the spot healing brush. Um, we do want to keep any of the color photos that we have we want to keep those color photos, but any black and white photos, they really do benefit from starting out with a black and white adjustment layer just to take away any kind of fading, discoloration kind of things happening. So I'm going to go to this layer here, and as you may remember before when we've used adjustment layers, the black and white adjustment layer lets you adjust any of the colors. So normally if this was a color photo we were turning black and white you could brighten or darken any of those individual colors in the photo. It works the same way with this except the only color that's really happening from our original here is that green stain. So I can lighten or darken the greens to make sure that it matches pretty much everything else happening around it. So I'm mostly looking at the stains that happened right on this lady's skirt here. There's some lighter ones down here, but I'm going to try to change as much as I can. So I'm going to try to neutralize that a little bit. So that looks pretty good. There's still a little bit happening down here on the grass, but I can use a few other tools to fix that later on. But just this one adjustment layer really helps fix a lot of that. So for these photos, we're gonna be using adjustment layers to fix things like the colors or any discoloration, um, but we can also use a variety of tools like the spot healing brush and the clone stamp, as well as any burning or dodging that you might need to do, um, and cropping. So I'm seeing a few little marks happening 
on this photo. It looks like that might be a scratch in the photo. I'm not sure what that is, but we're gonna go in with the spot healing brush. And make sure it's about the width of the things that I'm removing. And it's not looking like it's working. And that's actually because I'm on my adjustment layer here. Whenever you're using any of the tools, you want to make sure that you're on the background layer. Um, anytime you add the adjustments, it adds more layers. And you can't really use the spot healing brush on an adjustment layer. It doesn't do anything. So I need to make sure I'm on my background layer. If you can't find your layers, you can always go up to Window and select Layers. So I'm on my background layer, have my Spot Healing Brush selected. You can always change the size and the hardness of the brushes up here. Um, you can adjust the size and the hardness. I'm going to turn the hardness down all the way to 0% so it's real gradual has those fuzzy edges so there's no really hard lines where I'm adjusting things with this tool. Um, you can also change the size of any of the brush tools with the bracket keys on your keyboard. Those are the ones that look like boxy parentheses. They're the two keys to the right of the P on the keyboard. So the right bracket key makes it bigger, the left bracket he makes it smaller. So I'm going to go in and fix any little marks that are on the photo, any scratches. It looks like there's a lot of kind of dust that might have been on the photo when it was scanned down here. So I'm going to fix that up. It really does help to zoom in. You can always hold down Command on a Mac computer or Control on a Windows computer or Chromebook. And when you hold down that key, you can press plus to zoom in and minus to zoom out. So this right here actually looks like it might be a hair that was stuck to the photo when it was scanned. Maybe a crack in the actual paper. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that with the spot healing brush. You can do the same thing with the clone stamp. If you select a certain area that you want to cover another area with, you can use that with the clone stamp. But a lot of this can be fixed with the spot healing brush fairly quickly. You just want to have a small enough brush for the area you're working on and zoom in pretty close and that will help you be really precise. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to zoom out see what that looks like. That looks better. I'm not quite sure if the marks on the wall here are in the actual photo or if they are marks on the printed photo, but I'm going to go in and tidy this up a little bit. So it looks a little bit neater. So you want to just go around and remove any of that damage, any scratches, any marks, any little dust that pieces that might have happened. And when you're really zoomed in, what you can do to move around the photo is you can hold down the space bar and that takes your cursor from whatever tool you're using to a little hand and you can click and drag and move that around to navigate around the photo while you're zoomed in. You can always get to that little hand moving tool down here on the tools but it's real quick and easy to use the shortcut of just pressing down the keyboard and clicking and moving around the photo. So I've gotten a lot of things fixed on here. A few other marks. All right, so now the two ladies with the cat are looking a lot better here. 
I have some really light spots down here. So I have a couple options. I'm going to go ahead and zoom into this area. And down here, there's actually a patch of grass right next to it. So I could go in with a clone stamp and I could hold down command or control, oops, not command, option or alt over here. Make a selection, I'm gonna say right about here so I can fill in this area with this photo. And I'm just going to fill that in. It's a little bit darker, but it looks a little more natural than that lighter area. You can also go in with the spot healing brush and tidy that up so it's a little more gradual, but that looks a lot better. Over here, I could do something similar, but I don't want to really um, try to clone stamp over this foot here. So I'm gonna start with tidying things up a little bit with the spot healing brush. Make sure all these little specks are kind of removed. And then for this area, I'm gonna go in with the burn tool to make it a little darker because it's looking a little bright right here. So let's see here. I'm gonna go over to the burn and dodge. I'm gonna make sure I have the burn tool selected. That's the one that makes it darker. I have my exposure, which is the intensity of the brush, turned down to about 8% so I can build up some really gradual layers. And my brush is looking pretty soft, so that'll be nice and gradual. I'm gonna make sure I'm still in the background layer. And I'm gonna start to paint on with the burn tool to darken that a little bit. I wanna make sure in this area here, the, the tones are looking pretty consistent on the pant like here. There was a little bit of some light discoloration there. And that's looking a lot better. It's looking more like the ground there. And then I can go ahead and zoom out, and that looks a lot better. If I go back to my history right here, I can scroll all the way to the top, click on the very top, and that's my original image. And then if I scroll down to the bottom here, the last thing is the last thing I did. So that is actually looking pretty good. So now that I'm done with the photo, I can go ahead and save it and go to File and save as. I want to make sure that I am saving it on my computer. And I don't want to replace the original, so in the title I'm going to call this Practice 11, which is what it's originally called, and then I'm going to put in Edited at the end. Since I added a adjustment layer that made it want to be a PSD or a Photoshop document. So under format, I'm just going to go down and change that to a JPEG. So now that's all looking good. It's going to go back into the folder that I got it from. And I'm going to click save. And OK. So now that photo. Oops, that photo is saved right next to the original, I have the original, and then the edited version. So let's edit one more of these photos. Um, you want to make sure that you're selecting three of them. I'm going to go ahead and open this one here. So this photo is a little bit crooked. When it was scanned, it wasn't quite lined up right, and there's a lot of information around the photo that we don't really need from when it was scanned. It also has some stuff missing from the border, and we're gonna fix all of that, as well as any of the scratches and damage in the photo here. So I'm gonna start out with straightening it and cropping it. So if I go to the Crop tool, 
I can highlight about where I want to crop. We can always adjust this as we go before we submit the crop. Um, if you have any numbers in these sections right here, it might be on a specific ratio. And if that is the case, then <clears throat> you won't be able to change one side without changing the other. It will be a fixed ratio. So you can always click clear and then that will let you adjust either side as much as you need. Um, if it is moving the photo around and not the crop area, that's just one style of the crop tool. If you would prefer to move the crop area around on top of the photo instead, like this one is doing, um, then you can go up to the settings here and click use classic mode. And that's what I'm using here where you're just moving around the area that you're cropping, you're not moving around the photo. It works the same way, it just looks a little different when you're using it. Um, but if it is not on classic mode, then the photo moves around behind the crop area, which is fine as well. It's just a preference thing. I'm gonna use classic mode. And so I'm gonna line it up about where I want to crop it. And then if you look at the corner here where the cursor is, it has a diagonal arrow, so that's changing both sides of the crop area. But if you move the cursor just a little bit farther, it creates this curved arrow. And that curved arrow, if you click and hold that and move it from one side to the other, will rotate the cropped area. So that way we can straighten a photo. So I'm going to... Oops, I'm gonna go a little bit farther out to get that curved arrow. And I'm gonna turn it a little bit like that. I'm trying to line up the bottom area with the same angle of the bottom of the photo here. That looks about right. I'm gonna move this out to include this edge here. There's a lot of the border that's still here in this photo, so I'm gonna try to keep as much of it as I can. So even though I'm cropping a little bit off of the actual photo, that will just fill in white and then I can add in parts of the border to fill in that area up there. So that's looking pretty good. It's gonna straighten that. And then I'm going to go ahead and click the little checkbox right up here that will confirm the crop. So now I have some of those extra little white spaces around the edge. I can go ahead and use my spot healing brush to fix that up there. It's just gonna fill in those spaces that I paint on with the area around it. And since the border is just this pretty consistent tan color, it will just fill in with that. I'm going to fix any kind of scratches and marks as I go. And I'm just going to make sure that that's all filled in all the way around. Take out some of the scratches and stuff while I'm at it. And then I can also use the clone stamp to fill in some of these larger spaces. So the spot healing brush works really well for some smaller areas like this. But then when we get to some bigger areas, it helps to use the clone stamp or a combination of the spot healing brush and the clone stamp. Remember if anything weird starts happening, if it starts copying areas you don't want it to, you can always use Command or Control Z to undo or simply go back in your history. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing a little better.
And up in the border here, there's some words written and it looks like it's supposed to say near Tacoma. But we're missing the part of the border here where the second A in Tacoma is. So once I tidy up this area here, oops, then I am actually going to use the clone stamp and select this A and paint it on over here. So then we'll have an A to finish the word there. Similar to how last week we used the clone stamp to select different light bulbs that worked in that sign and fill it in over the top of the light bulbs that didn't work. I'm gonna go to the clone stamp. I'm gonna hold down Option or Alt. I'm gonna select somewhere on this letter here. I'm gonna let go of that Option or Alt key. And now I could technically paint this A anywhere on the photo but I wanna finish the word here, so I'm gonna line it up about where I think it should go, and I'm gonna paint that on there. So as you're using that tool to paint that on, you can see over on the original A, it's showing you where that selection is coming from. So as you move it, it will move with you. So if I kept going, it would fill in with the other letters as well. But I'm just going to go into the spot healing brush and remove that because we still do need to fill this in with some tan from the other areas. But now we have the full word of Tacoma there and no one will ever know that we went and borrowed that A from over there. The person who wrote it might just have really consistent handwriting for all anyone knows. We'll never know that we actually took that one and put it on over there. So now I'm going to go in and finish the border over here. I'm just using a spot healing brush to fill that in. Up at the top here. Then I can also use the clone stamp to fill in the larger areas, and that does help with the border here. So if we want to continue the border upward, what we can do is we can go to the clone stamp, and I'll hold down Option or Alt, make a selection about right here, and then I'm going to line that up where I need it so that the border continues upward. I'm just going to fill that in there. I'm accidentally adding a little bit of tree there. Don't want that. So I'm just going to take that out with a spot healing brush. Tidy things up a little bit. And I'm going back and forth with the spot healing brush and the clone stamp to fill in that area. So it's looking pretty good. Let's take a look at the whole photo. There's still a little bit of damage over here to fix a few things in the actual photo, some scratches, but this is looking pretty good. I can touch this stuff up here. Looks like there's a pretty big tear in the paper right on this tree here. And kind of a crease in the paper, so I'm going to take those out. Maybe some little specks on here we'll take out. This is looking a lot better. I might revisit this corner here and touch that up here. Once I go around the photo and fix a few other things, we have this scratch right here. I'm going to take that out. I zoom in and look around. That looks like it doesn't belong there. I'm use a fairly small brush for most of this. Mm -hmm. Look around the photo. Not sure if that's grass or a scratch. I'm going to take that out because it's kind of distracting from the rest of the photo. Alright. 
looking a lot better. So one other thing that could help this photo is it looks like it might have been a black and white photo originally or something that's kind of brownish like this that's called sepia tone. Um, but you can always go in with an adjustment layer. You can make it black and white, make it a little crisper. And that makes the photo look kind of dark. So I could also go in with an adjustment layer for brightness and contrast. Maybe up the brightness a little bit. That looks a lot better. And now I can just touch up the last, the last few little things. Oops, I need to go back to that background layer. I'm going to touch up with the spot healing brush, any of these little dust bits here. But that's looking pretty good. So there's a little line right here. That's looking pretty good. Let's see what we can do over here. Maybe a slightly larger brush since this is a bigger area. That looks better. Sometimes with a spot healing brush, you can try different directions on the same area. That helps fill things in. That's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and save that photo. So file, save as, save on the computer. This practice number two is edited. I'm going to change from a Photoshop document to a JPEG. That's going back into my Restoring Old Photos folder that I made. And then I click Save and OK. So now I have my edited version and my original of that photo and my edited version and my original of that photo. So you want to make sure to select three of these photos to edit. They're each going to need something a little bit different, but you can use any of the tools and adjustments any adjustment layers, anything in the tools like the spot healing brush, the clone stamp, dodging and burning, um, any of those tools really help along with cropping to straight tinting.